Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. And today, as promised, I have my friend Vera here with me. Unfortunately, Diane was not able to be with us today. Uh, hopefully in the future, we'll be able to get her uh, to share some of what the Lord has been showing her. But today, uh, Vera is going to share a vision that her friend Diane was given uh, probably, what, a few days ago? Yeah. Month ago? Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lord gave Vera the interpretation of this vision. And I wanted you all to hear this because I really feel that it dovetails perfectly with the, the warning dream that I shared yesterday about grace right. being distorted and this need for the body of Christ uh, to be corrected on this and to really um, come into this this place of getting the, the truth, understanding the truth as, as the word of God teaches. All right, so I'm going to let Vera go ahead and share. Well, Diana told me it was 4 a.m. in the morning when God gave her a vision and she said she remembered it was a brown leather bound Bible and uh, fire was coming out of this Bible. And so she said then she saw Jesus coming down from heaven with fire coming out of his mouth. And as he spoke words to the unsaved and to those who had fallen away, um, she said she just continued to see that Bible burning and the fire coming out of Jesus' mouth. So she had texted me and asked me, what did I think this means? She said, the Lord said, ask Vera. She'll have the interpretation of this. So uh, immediately I, you know, text her back and told her that leather in a dream represents a toughness, a durability, a strength, and fire is used to test and purify the hearts of men. So I felt like in these last days is what this was, is the Lord is going to go out in great strength to do just that. And it's time to pick your side. Men's either going to have to be hot or cold, all in, yeah. or not in at all. And so the fire out of Jesus' mouth is the word, which the Bible mm -hmm. tells us is sharper than a two-edged sword. Right. And I believe God is giving... Uh, a last chance, a final call mm -hmm. to repentance before he calls the church out. And mm -hmm. so the word will be his tool, yeah. bound in leather, because uh, the Bible tells us that his word will not pass away, but it will go out to accomplish that which it needs to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Okay, so it just sounds like the Lord is definitely bringing forth fire. Now, fire, as you were pointing out, is uh, is cleansing. This is something that is going to cleanse his body. So it's not going to be comfortable. The word mm -hmm. that's coming forth from the Lord to, to his church, to those who are not really where they need to be, like we were talking about people who have bought into uh, this distorted grace message, it's going to be tough to come into the, the reality, the truth uh, mm -hmm. that... There's a price to pay to follow Jesus. There's a price yeah. to pay. Uh, Jesus talks about that. I'm not going to get into that. But there's scriptures where Jesus literally sits down and, and explains the cost of following him. Mm -hmm. And that everybody really should stop and think before they make that choice to follow him. Because it's, like I said yesterday in that video, it's not the easy path. It is not. No. It's not easy, but it is worth it. It's Absolutely. definitely worth it. But now Vera has been shown some things too. And I was, I'd asked her if she would share some of the things the Lord has been showing her, because as we all know, time is running out. Time is mm -hmm. short. And many of us have been being shown that uh, the Lord is coming for his church soon. And we don't know what day or hour, but again, we know the season and we know it's soon. So mm -hmm. for all of us, and this is what I tell Alan, my husband, a lot of times, you know, we, we need to always uh, be prepared to stay and ready to go at all times, prepared to stay, ready to go, do what we have to do. If mm -hmm. we have to stay here uh, longer so that we're ready for what's coming, but be ready to go whenever the Lord comes. Mm -hmm. You know what you said a little bit ago about grace? I was uh, sitting here thinking it's hard to unlearn what you've learned. And we haven't always learned things properly. correctly, properly. And so we know and believe that we're living on borrowed time. Mm -hmm. We really are. People yep. say, well, I've heard that all my life. We're living the last days. But so now I say we're living in the last 
of the last days. You know, you'll hear people say, uh, well, the Bible says that nobody will know the day or the hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, while that's true, Jesus said he would return as a thief in the night. But Jesus also, uh, you know, had Paul to write in his uh, writings that we're not sons of the darkness, we're sons sure. of light. Yep. And so we're not, we're not of the night. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't be sleeping. We right. shouldn't be unaware. And right. while we might not know the exact day and hour, mm -hmm. we can know the season. Oh, so I feel like the, the Lord is telling people now to, to be on the alert, right. uh, to be sober, you know, because mm -hmm. that season is, is coming. Yep. And God never pours out his wrath without warning his people. We we see all through the Bible that he did that. Mm -hmm. You know, he warned Sodom and Gomorrah through uh, Abraham. You know, he warned the people through Noah for mm -hmm. 120 years. You know, uh, yep. he sent Jonah to warn the people of Nineveh. And I do believe he's sending the prophets of today yes. to warn the church mm -hmm. that it's time to do something different than right. what you've been doing. And one of the things that the Lord uh, had told me that it's no time to be living on the edge. So when I heard that clearly that night, I, I thought about that a lot. Mm. You know, what does it mean living on the edge? Right. Well, a lot of people, that's how they live. They're not, um, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing and they want to believe that that doesn't matter. But all through the Bible, obedience does matter. Mm-hmm. So no one is accidentally going to go to hell. And so uh, you purposely choose. You purposely choose whether to uh, love this world or, or to love God. And so it's no time to be living on the edge means mm -hmm. it's time to repent. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah. it's time to turn our attention uh, to the Lord. Yeah. You know, I also saw in one of my things there was a line being drawn. It was a, it was a uh, very long in bold line and I heard the Lord say a line is being drawn and you're to live above this line and so I think it's just a uh, time that um, people need to consider their spiritual condition right. you know of themselves uh, maybe even the spiritual condition of people that we're listening to yeah. uh, the church well, that they're sure. in yeah. you know um, we're supposed to be doing all that we can do to get ready for the bride to come. If I was going to get married tomorrow, there was a lot of big preparations I mm -hmm. would be making. You know, right. I'd go and get my hair done. I'd go get my nails done. Sure. Because when my bridegroom looked at me, I wanted him to think, you know, wow, right. this is what I've been waiting exactly. for. And so I feel like we've kind of got in a slump, uh, you know, in the church that we're not watching and waiting and getting ready uh, for the bridegroom uh, to come. Last night was uh, very, I had a dream and it was very sobering. And uh, in the dream, I was, um, I was outside and I was surrounded in a large area by a fence. And this fence was one of those old time fences that we would say it was a, a split rail, but zigzagged, mm -hmm. you know how it uh, those were. And uh, it looked so pretty. I remember standing there thinking it looked so pretty. And all of a sudden, I didn't see a black sky. I didn't see a storm rising. I didn't see anything. But all of a sudden, pieces of wood just started flying everywhere. Uh, wood was just going everywhere until there was nothing left of of this fence it it fell apart wow. it was like a it was like a bomb went off and that w that wood and that fence was just going every which direction mm -hmm. so i began to think about that okay what is the fence for a fence is a, ba a boundary uh it's a barrier a fence is put there for protection for people yeah. so uh in relating to that it's no time to be living on the edge people feel like they're under the protection of anything happening and of anything going wrong. But if you've allowed sin into your life, God could withhold that protection uh, from you. So I, I think there was a warning in that, that it, it's time 
it may be a time that everything's going to be exploding and you need to make sure mm -hmm. that you're within the boundaries that you have the Lord's protection over you. I thought about mm -hmm. the the wolf in sheep clothing coming in yes. uh, to the church. You know, uh, a, a fence, a boundary keeps things from coming in. Yeah. And we can see that that's happening, you know. And so mm -hmm. what have we done that's caused that to happen? Where has, where is there a break in the fence, uh, you might say? You know, where yeah. where are we not under the protection of the Lord because we're not in obedience to the word of the Lord? Right, right. And I think that's key right there is the lack of obedience is really the, the problem that with yeah. the, the body of Christ today is, and, yeah. and the consequence, it's you're living in a delusion if you believe that you can live your life in a lifestyle of sin. I'm not talking about, you know, somebody who's weak and we trip up and get up and keep trying. Right. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about somebody who's embracing a lifestyle of sin, something that you know is sin. And mm -hmm. you're embracing that and walking in it. To think you can do that and there is never going to be a consequence is delusional. Yeah. Because all you have to do is look through the history of the Bible to see how God dealt with sin and uh, how he dealt with his people when they lived in constant rebellion to him. They were, there was consequences. Okay. So mm -hmm. many of them were, uh, they were taken captive uh, by Babylon, Babylon. They went into captivity in uh, Egypt. They were enslaved by the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. there, there was a lot of yeah. suffering that resulted from their directly from their disobedience. Now in America, a lot of, and, I mean, I know people listen to these videos worldwide, but just in America alone, uh, I think that there's just a lot of complacency when it comes to sin. And Absolutely. I talked about this in my video yesterday, but there, I've heard other prophetic voices talking about this separation that's going to be coming or actually going to be uh, getting more intense, the, the separation of the, of the people who are truly following the Lord and those who are not. And... Uh, I was, I was sharing this with Vera just a little bit ago that I had a dream just a couple nights ago where I saw this, I was like on a farm and I saw one of those little red wagons and it was just packed full of like antiquities and like people who were generals of the faith, like faith. Like I remember seeing Smith Wigglesworth's picture and there were others on there and there was a picture of somebody next to Smith and I was probably you know, 10 yards away, but my eyes just zeroed in on that picture of the person who was next to him, the, the picture of him, and it just fell off the cart. It fell off the wagon. So I feel like what we're going to be seeing is things are going to be ramping up. Okay. Like Vera saw the, the fence just exploded uh, unexpectedly. There was no warning and there's going to be a greater separation of mm -hmm. the people who are truly sold out to the Lord, walking with him and and those who are going to be falling off the wagon those who are not going to be able to press on through the hard times that are coming and this is the reason that these warnings are so important is because that times are going to be getting tougher and yeah. we we know we don't know the day yeah. or the hour but we do know the time is coming for jesus to return for us but until that time things are going to continue to ramp up and they're going to be, and we're mm -hmm. going to get to a place where we don't know how hard it's going to be for the church. We already see how difficult it is, especially for the Jews in Israel, all the persecution going on there. We know Christians are being persecuted, have been for mm -hmm. the past 2,000 years, but we see it getting worse and worse, all right, year after year. So if you're not really grounded in your walk with the Lord, if you're not really sold out to Jesus, and like Vera was talking about that covering that comes with that, obedience to the Lord, you could be in serious trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, Melissa, you know, thinking about that and you listen to what you're saying, I think everybody thinks they're ready, you know, and that's deception. That's true. It really is. And so we can do something about our own condition. Absolutely. You know, I was listening to um, Jeremiah Johnson yesterday mm -hmm. and he had said that the Lord gave him a word that America is the new Babylon. Oh, wow. And yeah. so, yeah, he was, um, he had done an interview with James Gall. I'm not sure you're familiar with him, but he wrote the book, The Seer, mm -hmm. a very good book. And the Lord had told James that he is uh, opening 
uh, the book of Daniel for people. And he was saying that we need to be reading that book of Daniel. And uh, James said that he had a vision and he had, he saw this like gold box mm -hmm. and he had a key in his hand I'm and the sorry, gold. <laughs> this is what I have to put on. Riley, go lay down, go lay down, go. Come on, come on, I know you're old. <laughs> But come on. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was listening to Jeremiah Johnson uh, yesterday, and he said that the Lord had told him America is the modern-day Babylon. And um, that's the culture we live in. But yeah. that doesn't mean we can't be a Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego and, yeah. and go against that culture. And right. he said that's, that's what exactly we need right. to do. And this, mm -hmm. uh, he was interviewing James Gall. Mm -hmm. uh, James wrote the book, um, The Seer. And James was saying that he had a vision and he saw this gold box and in his hand, he had a key. So he went to this box and he, he used the key and he opened this box and he looked inside the box and there was the book of Daniel. And the Lord uh, revealed to him that, you know, where knowledge will increase in the last days, that he is uh, revealing a lot of things that's in the book of Daniel. And Jeremiah Johnson and James Gall was recommending that Christian people right now read the book of Daniel because we know that's a lot about the end time. Oh, yeah. uh, the end time thing. So I, I think there's something to that. You know, uh, we need to search our own hearts mm -hmm. because there's a scripture in Proverbs that says every man is right in his own eyes, but we know that's not true. Mm -hmm. Every, you know, so when, if we search our own hearts, yeah, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to right. us if there's anything there that shouldn't be. The Bible says in first John that we confess our sins, and then he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. We don't know what we don't know. And we can't, all of us can be deceived. Right. And we live in a day of deception. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget mm -hmm. in 2018, I've probably said this on your uh, video channel before, Melissa, that the Lord said there's two things going to catch the church up in the end times. It's deception and distractions. Yeah. And we see that it's everywhere. everywhere. Mm -hmm. But it, it's time that you know, we, we line up. It mm. is no, it's not a time to be living on the edge because I mean, I believe the rapture is intimate. I believe just like that, mm -hmm. it could happen yep. and it's, and it's done. Yeah. Your choice has been made for you. Right. You know, when, when it happens, it happens. So I think these things are very uh, sobering things. I do think uh, Diane's mm. vision was very encouraging because I do think that God is going to pour out his spirit and light needs to become lighter, you know, but we're going to have to speak up. We're going to have to say right. some things that we maybe haven't said before because we know yeah. our culture is against us. Some churches are against us, but he's going to use the word as a refining fire, not just on ourselves, but judgment begins in the house of the Lord with the church yeah. and for our country. Absolutely. So we're living in critical times right now and right now is the time that we can make a difference in this world amen and we need we need to we need to be absolutely the light. we need to be the salt okay we need to be doing exactly what jesus commanded us to do we have a duty and we need to be occupying while we're here exactly exactly I, i'm a firm believer in jesus is coming soon amen me too me yeah. too yeah praise god we look forward to that day. But until that day, church, uh, let's all do our best to take these warnings to heart and share these things with people who you know need to hear them, would be willing to listen to them. Uh, and, you know, if, if you're not sure where you're at spiritually, just pray. Ask the Father to Amen. show you. That's right. You know, it, it's, it's a relationship. Search your own heart. Yeah, it, it's a relationship, and he, he will show you the way mm -hmm. if, if you ask, if you ask him. Yeah. But uh, any other closing thoughts here? That's about all I had to share. Okay. Thank you for giving me the opportunity oh, to no, do that. I'm you. sure Diane will be excited yeah. to know that her uh, vision has been shared too. Yeah. She has such a hunger and a desire 
to talk to people about the coming of the Lord. Yes. And unfortunately, she's pretty discouraged because most people don't want to hear it, even church people. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And I think yeah. a lot of people listening to this video can identify with that, unfortunately. Yeah. But that is the reality. But we will keep talking about it. And hopefully in, right. in the near future, we'll get Diane on. Um, it sounds like she has a lot of wisdom and she's heard some she pretty does. amazing things from the Lord. And uh, maybe we can, you know, do something like this consistently once a month. Uh, just share prophetic words that people are given. Because we have just Absolutely. a very small circle of, of friends who hear from the Lord regularly. And uh, I think we can all benefit from hearing what God is showing them. So Absolutely. It's interesting mm -hmm. you said that we have a very small circle. Because that was yeah. another word the Lord gave me a couple years ago. To make your circle smaller. Yeah. Um, well, and and it's sad, but yeah. you know, God always pulls a remnant of people mm -hmm. uh, out of these situations. Um, you know, we we mm -hmm. you know we we're the church. We're going to be that remnant that's pulled out. That's mm -hmm. you know, but how many people would that be? It right. may be a small remnant. We really don't know. But yeah. what I do know is I want to be in that number. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Amen. All right. Well. Anyway, I hope that this uh, message has encouraged you. I hope it has blessed you. And as always, church, it is my prayer, our prayer, that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.